All right, guys, coming to you with a little midweek video here on the Turbo Cobra channel. My name is Gary, for those of you that do not know that. Um, for some of you that have been following along on the other channel, we've been working on this crane project that you see in front of you here. And I got the major pieces of it cut out last night and delivered to the customer. And I've got this one last piece, and I thought I would just kind of feature in on it and kind of walk you through um, the steps I'm going to use because I'm going to use the large bandsaw, um, the belt sander, and the large mill to make this part. Um, this cannot be cut on my table because it is one and a quarter inch thick. And um, my table can only do, uh, I've, I've only got the Hyperthermo 85, which is rated up to one inch. <clears throat> And this is a lifting lug, and if you uh, look at the part, I, I took the, the CAD drawing, which did not have the hole in it. I guess they they did the CAD drawing to uh, thinking that the, the hole would be manually drilled, I'm not sure, but I added the hole in the right location based on the drawing, and I'm gonna cut that out of sheet metal on my table and then use that as a template to uh, scribe a line to uh, cut on the bandsaw. Um, but before we do that, I am going to punch the hole. And um, so we're going to just, you know, lay everything out and then get ready to punch the hole. And uh, we'll take you along as we go here. All right, you see we've got our lug uh, set up in sheet cam. So we're going to head over to mock here. We've got it loaded up. We were zeroed out and we've got a little piece of sheet metal on the table. So we'll just cycle start it and cut it out. All right, so we got our piece cut out that matches our lug that you see on the print. Um, and I could just, you know, lay this out and trace it or whatever, but what I'm gonna do is get the center of the hole laid out from the dimensions uh, off the edges. And then once I get that, I'll lay this on top of it, match up the hole, and then scribe around it and bandsaw it out. So the center of the hole from, from the edge of the plate to the center of the hole is two and a quarter. So I'm gonna take my calipers here and get those on two and a quarter. We'll go a little bit over two and a quarter, so. Scratch a little witness mark in here, somewhere near the center. All right, and I, I ordered this an inch longer than I needed it to be. So um, I think it's, uh, let's see what we got here. I think it's 10 inches long, so we'll go five inches to the center. Yeah, it's 10 inches long. So we'll, we'll take it at five inches. Just roughly, we don't have to get it perfect on this. And uh, so we'll scribe a cross line here. And I don't know if that's showing up in the camera or not, but I'll kind of move it around a little bit so you can kind of get an idea. And uh, we'll center punch it now. I'll kind of show off my new uh, center punch that I ordered. This is a Starrett um, number 18-C. They're heavy duty. This is the most, did a little research, found the most powerful one I could get. And, uh, and this was it. So, um, so we'll just get this lined up in here. And again, the cross line is the most important line because it's the distance off the 
off the edge. All right, so we will get a one and a half inch hole punched through that over here on the middle. So I got I got to swap the chuck out and do all that. So I'll do that off camera, and we'll come back and uh, and get that drilled. All right, we'll get our part set up in the vise here, and I took a little bit of time to clean the chips out just to make sure we didn't get any in there. And with a slightly snug All right, the first thing I'm going to do is pick up the hole location and I've got a little uh, center made that I that I took out of a of a center punch and I'll get this uh, chucked up and not leave too much of it sticking out. It doesn't have to be that tight and we'll just position it over the mark. I mean, it, the point of it get some light on here. The point of it's bottomed out in the in the hole. Just keep working it around until it perfectly fits in there. So. Uh, And this is a carbide uh, starting bit here. So we'll just kind of get the hole started with it. Just a little witness mark there, not too much more than that. It's really all it needs. And we'll run that in high. Next up, we'll use uh, probably like a 3 8 inch uh, bit. We'll see what we got here that will work. And that was on 1600 RPMs. I'm going to turn this down to about 1200 or so, a thousand somewhere in that range. All right, we'll go ahead and get this punched through. I'll try to keep my forearm out of the way where you can see. All right, we're gonna go right from that to a one and a half inch 
I normally would drill a one progression between these two, but people complain, you know, on my other videos drilling large holes that I really didn't need to do that. So uh, as long as you clear the, you know, the center point and get into the web, web of the uh, of the drill, it should not be a problem. So we'll see. One and a half inch twist drill. Let's see if we can get this to fit. I don't know, this is a reduced shank drill bit, and but it's what I got to work with. Just worked out that I had this already, and the drawings call for a one and a half inch hole. So that worked out good. And we're gonna put the machine in low gear and run this on about 200 and yeah, 200 RPMs or so, somewhere in that range. We got that punch through there. You see we made a big mess, but these chips are easy to clean up, vacuum up. I'll get those vacuumed up later. Um, gonna try to uh, chamfer this hole a little bit, and it's a one and a half inch hole, and I've got a one and a half inch uh, countersink bit here. And uh, this shank has got some flats on it, which really helped it from, you know, kept it from twisting the, the uh, the tool's not that hot. You see none of our chips are, you know, um, got dark colors or anything. So I think we were running it pretty safely there. I was really cranking down on it once it got into it a little bit. Putting a lot of pressure. So let's see if this will put a little bit of a chamfer on this hole. There's nothing, nothing like looking at a freshly chamfered clean hole. So I'll flip it over and put a similar chamfer on the other side and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, well you see we got our hole uh, drilled and it should line up with the hole in this and basically put us in the center of the plate here. And you can see it pretty well worked out like I had hoped it would there. So, um, I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time getting that hole centered up. And then uh, what I'll do is clamp this down. Let me 
make sure I don't move anything. Move that over. So that's pretty good with that edge. Now I'm gonna uh, do this twice. Let me get my hand out of the way. I'm gonna get the general outline and I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna come back and just hit this with some blue so we can see our scribe line really good on the bandsaw. Clamp that back, get it clamped back down, and then we'll scribe it. I'm trying to be, you know, as precise and accurate as I can without getting just extremely fussy. There's no tolerances listed on this blueprint. And and talking to the customer, they said, yeah, whatever, you know, don't worry about it. So, all right, I went ahead and threw another clamp on there just to make sure it doesn't move on us. So, All right, I don't know how that's shown up in the camera, but I can see the scribe lines really well now. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this band sawed. Okay, we are over here at the Dewall vertical bandsaw, and I just put a, a new blade on it, and I'm gonna lower the, the uh, guide down to uh, uh, just above the work surface there a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing cut out. I, because I just put the blade in it, you know, a new blade on one of these really requires um, you to take it easy when you're first uh, using it. So we're gonna go really slow and break it in good. And then after maybe 10 minutes of using it, we'll, we'll start pushing the material into it a little harder. So uh, hopefully uh, my hands will stay out of the way. You can kind of see what I'm doing. and. Um, and I'll, I'm not going to talk while I'm doing it and I'll probably just hit the fast forward and get you through it quicker. So here we go. a pretty nice cut um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish the other side off camera and that's 11 minutes worth of uh, 11 minutes to do that one side just going super super slow uh, not really pushing it at all so uh, I'm gonna go a little faster now I think they call for 10 minutes you know of uh, break-in 
uh, initially and then you can go to 75% of your normal feed rate and then up to 100 after that so anyway I'll uh, bring you back at the end all right so uh, got got it all cut out here and uh, just left a little bit you can see the scrub line really left all the way around and uh, now so we'll take it on the belt sander and just kind of clean up that edge a little bit and uh, mainly that right there so I may nip that off on the bandsaw real quick and then get the rest on the belt, belt sander. All right, just gonna do a little de deburring on it and then uh, this will be finished. All right, well, we got this one all finished up. Another video in the books. And uh, let's take a couple of quick measurements here just to uh, see what we got. This should be somewhere around uh, four and an eighth. So a little bit over four and an eighth there. And then this distance here is nine inches. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah, really close on that. So this edge up here, I could have stood to belt sand that just a little bit more, but I'm gonna let it ride as it is and we will go from there. Again, there's no tolerances on it. Um, and uh, so appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't checked out the other channel, I've got links. Go check that out. We got all the day-to-day -day going on about this project, many other projects. You can kind of see what happens before we actually make the videos, the final videos that make it on this channel. So thanks, guys. Have a good one.